So this episode we leave our free camp at 40 mile and we head back down the highway to camp on the side of the Ashburton River just out of Onslow and then from there we head to Ballara Station Stay in the Exmouth Gulf and then Garalia Station Stay also in the Exmouth Gulf. Did we just get that in one take? Mm. Wow. Best time ever. Where are we going Tiff? Oh, another baby. <laughs> <laughs> Onslow. Onslow. But into town, or are we still thinking camping on the Ashburton? Yeah, somewhere on the river. Yeah. Let's roll. But well, we haven't any breakfast. Oh, alright, let's have some breakfast. Then let's roll. Yeah, after. After breakfast next one. Right -o. Beautiful spot. Unfortunately, the weather conditions are rubbish and it is blowing its bum off. You can see there's like waves in this river. So this is three miles. It's a free camp, not far from Onslow. We're closer to old Onslow, which is the abandoned older town. Onslow is like a mining town on the coast between Caratha and Exmouth, I guess. So yeah, this is a free camp, heaps of water around, plenty of spots along the river. Um, can have fires here. There's absolutely no amenities or anything. Oh my God, it's so windy. How do you reckon we're gonna go with the stove in this weather? <laughs> oh, you had a bit of a Marilyn Monroe with your dress there, Tiff. That's gonna be my thumbnail. <laughs> God, I think Chloe's brave enough to come outside. What are you doing, chicken? <laughs> come outside. All right. There was a croc spotted in this river just a few weeks ago, I think. Um, a saltwater croc, I think. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. Which is super unusual. Um, we're too far south, they're big salties, but they reckon that when they're sick, they'll they'll cruise down south and they'll come up the um, come up the rivers to die. So. Oh my god. I think that one was shot, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. I don't think he was really catered. I think he was popped. Days like this, I'm really glad we got the van and we're not doing it in the forward fold. We could have done it in the forward fold, no questions about it. But it's just, it's just not as comfortable. Like, it's, I don't want to be outside in this. I want to get inside and chill out on the bed or on the couch. I reckon this will be us today. Cold wraps for lunch and dinner. Chilling in here. Probably watch a movie on the telly all together. So we're in the old town site now. So basically, um, mid 19th century settlers came here overcame aboriginal resistance to set up a bit of a, a township and that river that we were camping on they used to send uh, their supplies used to come via ships down that river i don't know why people feel the need to scratch their name into something So when settlers were um, settling this area in the late 1800s, there was a lot of resistance from the local Aboriginal people. Um, and the legislation back there, there was an act called the Master and Servants Act. So basically, um, white settlers could take Aboriginal people and 
and um, enslave them. And they were allowed to do that. There was uh, legislation allowing them to do that, which is pretty crazy. And if they were met with any resistance when they were trying to do that, um, or if they came under attack or anything like that, then they'd be thrown in these, um, the, these sort of makeshift jails. It was pretty lawless, pretty wild, and pretty average conditions. This, these, this would have been the outside yard. Um, shackled to the floor there if you needed to be, if, you, if they were too violent or... And there's, the glass on top of the walls there was a primitive sort of um, way of barrier control. That was before barbed wire. So you couldn't scale the walls. And this would have been the jail cell. So there would have been a shackle there. Um, no toilets or anything like that. Chamber pots, I guess. And these, yeah, these, yeah there's the shackle. And then the, the jailers and the coppers and the courthouse and whatnot was in these other buildings. Yeah, a bit of a stark reminder of um, some of the Australian history we're not too proud of. So inside, Tiff popped the roof open, flipped the bed out, put the table on, and the TV. And the, TV. the TV and the table will stay fold up with all the bedding during transit. Yeah, we'll show it in another video. And she just would have moved Chloe's curtain back up because we just sort of slide that down like that as we're driving because the pop top doesn't will knock it. Oops, that's why it's your job. And that's about it in here, isn't it? Yep. Ah, it's and put the, the couch and the table and this. Oh, and she's unzipped all the windows. You get such good um, yeah. airflow through these. It's lovely and cool already. So that's uh, that's the sort of setup we do if we're staying connected to the car. You're looking at another couple of minutes if we had to level it and disconnect it from the car. Um, I didn't put the awning out because we don't know if we'll need it it's yet. Dark. But the awning is electric, as you've seen. It's just a flick of that button. Um, so that, yeah, that takes another 30 seconds or something. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty quick little setup.
Are you knackered from that little walk? <laughs> Packing up and leaving uh, Valara now. We're gonna head over to a station about 40, 50 k's away, still inside this Exmouth Gulf sort of area called um, Garalia Station. Um, so I'm just starting to pack up and lucky I had a good look around the car because if we had packed up and driven away, I would have squashed our mate here. Just chilling in the shade. Hello. I ain't got any food for you, buddy. You're pretty friendly, aren't you? That was a short drive, 40 odd k's back from uh, Valara, and we're at Garalia. Sorry if I'm pronouncing all these wrong. Just booked us a site on the beach, um, so I may have to let tyres down and put it in full drive. I don't know yet. We'll see how we go. Pretty much my only complaint about the MDC really is just the kitchen oh. This is how we keep the wind out. Yeah. This Take is... a beach towel on the front to protect the wind. What's for dinner? Uh, so they would have seen me doing um, chicken katsu before. I think we did that in the Gib River Road part one. Same deal but, but fish katsu so rice is going. Whoa! That was a bit of a titanic moment yeah. there, wasn't it? Rice is going there. Uh, fish is going there, panko crumbs, uh, and that tonkatsu sauce, that nice um, sauce I've told you about before. So that's it there, tonkatsu. Uh, we found it at Woolies, but not every Woolies. So we've pulled into Guralia Station, 24 bucks a night, so it's pretty cheap, but there's no facilities, it's just beach camping. Um, pretty remote, there's a dump point. Um, but that's it, you need to bring your own water, there's no water here, and obviously no electricity. Um, there's lots of little beach camps dotted along, all the way up the beach here, and down there as well. There is also um, creek camping, so you can camp along the creek that's down that way. Oh, it's windy today, but apparently... Tomorrow it's going to die off, so I think the wind dies off tomorrow when it's high tide. So we'll have a bit of crack at fishing out the front here. But all this kind of golf area, it's really shallow for ages out. So you really need a tinny or or at least a kayak or something to get out to catch any decent fish. But we'll have a go anyway. And otherwise we're just here for two nights, we're just chilling. And then we're going passing through Exmouth and onto the uh, uh, Cape, Cape Range. Range? Yeah, Cape yeah. Range side, the National Park side. Yeah. Should be good. So we, we came through Exmouth on our way up, um, but as we said in that episode, we only went to Exmouth um, just because we'd done Cape Range before, but since we've got the time now, we thought we'd head back to Cape Range and actually stay on the beach camping on that side. Then we're going to cross Yardi Creek and head down to Ningaloo Station. Now, Daddy. Oh, good. Yeah. That's called Cupy. Japanese mayonnaise. While the tide's nice and low this morning, we're going to see if we can walk out across the flats to that oh, island. Wind's a lot better today. Right, put your hands on, let's go.
if you know what this is, let us know in the comments. It looks like a sand dollar, but then it's got like fairy octopus tentacles. That's weird. Yeah, little Poe is pretty, pretty disappointed because while we're at Ballara, they do a damper night. There's a fellow who calls himself Damper John, who's been doing dampers there for like seven years. Just bungs them on for guests. But too windy, so they weren't doing it. So I thought I'd make her a, uh, a damper today. I'll stick her in a travel buddy oven. Um, we've got heaps of sun, so I'm running her just off solar. It's not dipping into my battery supply. And we've got some, oh, I can see a sea turtle out there. And a sea turtle, Pivy. I've got some chopped chips, so I'll bang them in there. So, yeah, a bit of self-raising flour, an egg, and some sugar. People keep hitting me up for recipes to stuff. I don't really do recipes. I just sort of make it up as I go, but it's all the same ingredients. It's just how much it differs. Chopped chips are in and some milk. So if I'm doing like a sweet damper, I'll always put egg, sugar, milk with my self-raising. If I'm just doing like a savoury damper, I, um, I normally go a can of beer or water, self-raising, and still a couple of teaspoons of sugar and a bit of salt. Play around with it until you get the right consistency. The more you need it, the more it sort of holds itself together when you cut it. The less you need it, the more sort of crumbly it is. So I'm not needing it too much, just enough to get the right sort of shape and consistency. Flour my tin. Bang that in. It's gonna be pretty big this one. Just noticed all the flour all over myself, and it just reminded me of um, Malcolm Douglas. If you've never seen his early his early stuff, um, have a look on YouTube. It's all still up there. Uh, he was a legend, Malcolm Douglas. But I, I used to love how he had these twenty litre drums of um, flour that he took with him, and he was just banging out a damper all the time. He was a funny bugger. Good to watch. So that's preheated. It's that full whack. Probably about an hour, but I'll let you know. So that's been an hour and 45. And it looks good to me. Any good? Good, Bobby? Good. So we've packed up, we're heading into Exmouth. We're gonna head into Cape Range National Park. We'll be there for three nights.